I think uh, Dove season opening day is like better than Christmas day here at the, oh, the family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Dove season is like a family tradition to us. We've been doing it for years. We're still lucky that we still have a good flight pattern, flight migratory route where a lot of these birds still continue flying. You know, we grew up all agriculture farmers, so we've always sat in that little gold mine, that mecca of white wing yeah. uh, land because we got our orchards for them to roost. We got our corn fields, our grain fields, and it just, it's a tradition. That's kind of what makes our tradition even better. Hey, what's up, barbecue lovers? Today, we're in Edinburgh, Texas at my good friend Jaime Perez's ranch for opening day of dove season. Dove hunting is huge in Texas and especially in South Texas where friends and families gather together to hunt, cook, and make great memories. In this video, Jaime will be showing us his recipe for birds on a roost along with the technique and all you need to cook some RGV white wing doves. What are you going to show us how to do today? Today we're going to probably do what everybody likes and it's usually a bacon wrap jalapeno mm -hmm. stuffed dove. Say there ain't no right way, there ain't no wrong that's way, right? right? That's uh, right. Uh, so so there's, that's the beauty about it. It's, it's wild game. You can perfect it to your choice you can add what you want how you want it and at the end of the day it's about you how you taste what was flying in the sky a minute ago is gonna be in our bellies here in a few but I got some white wing real Grandy Valley white wing dove yes sir all yeah. right let's get them on the grill oh baby that looks good can you hear the sizzle yeah I got it I hear that sizzle this is something you're not gonna get at your local barbecue shop and when we taste this recipe toward the end of the video Jaime will also be sharing his three main tips of advice for anyone who wants to make this recipe too Y'all let me know in the comments if you make it to the three tips and if you have any questions about the recipe or his amazing and fun tradition. And let me know how you cook your doves and what your family and hunting traditions are. So let's get fired up, shoot some bird, and cook some bird. Vamonos! What do you say? You got it. I'm ready, let's man. Do it, let's man. do it, man. Andrew, what you got cooking, bud? And right now I got pastor cooking on the grill. It smells amazing. Yes, this is my primo, my cousin, Raul Segovia. That's a mustache. <laughs> What do we got going on in here, Anthony? We're just doing some basic grilling. Sausage, fajitas, and chicken, and some leg quarters. You know, just for the people that are here. Carne asada, baby. Oh, so. Woo, look at that pit. It's full of goodness. Yeah. Man, I smell that onion. It smells good. Oh, man. We got two expert cooks here today. They're going to show us how it's done. Talk to us. All right, well, we got just the simple ingredients. Of course, I need the main ingredient here is the white wing dove right here of course we basically pull the breasts off got the breasts there they still got the bone plate in them and in a minute here we're going to show you the process of kind of filleting them out got this onion here we're going to go with a bell pepper for those that don't like the hot and spicy yeah. uh, and then uh, those that do we got the jalapeno pepper because remember me that's right part here. of the stuffing yeah and then we got the cream cheese which also is going to go in there all right uh, i think one thing i am missing you were supposed to bring me something what well, i told you goes good with cream cheese you need the american pitmaster barbecue rub that's right all right, I got I, it. I will get it. All I right, can help perfect. you with that. Basically, you got your dove. Your dove is just your, it's, it's, it's a bird just like any other bird, chicken, duck, right. whatever the case. In this case, we took the rib cage out. So we're going to come up the top of the shoulders right here, and you're going to okay. make an incision there and an incision there. And then you're going to use your thumbs here in this case. So you're going to push down against, you'll feel that breastplate. See it right mm, there? Yep. And just like any other breast, you're going to have the actual breast and the tenderloin. Once I got this right here, I'm just going to pull down. And look at that. Wow. So here. Quick and easy. Quick and easy. Some people like to cut it down the half and then pay. I, I like to just keep it all together. I like the way it looks butterfly exactly. that way. Exactly. It's a Beautiful. butterfly. It looks yeah. like a good little heart shape. Yeah. And that gives you more of a, you know, way to kind of stuff everything and close it up and then wrap it into bacon. At this point, like I said, ain't no wrong way, no right way. Anything you want to stuff this breast with, sky's the limit. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it basic, basically with the ingredients we got here. So I've always heard skin is makes it better. I know you talk about the fat, yeah, down, up, yeah. fat down. So if you want to leave the skin on the bird, it's a wild, it's a wild animal. It's wild game. Normally wild game is a lot leaner than say your, your, your store-bought stuff. True. It's up to you also, but in this case, since we're using bacon, it's going to get a lot of good fat. Skin on, skin off, it's really not going to matter. I really like the way you butterflied those and took the whole rib cage out. Yeah. I, had, I had not seen that before. I've always seen people cook them with the bacon and stuff inside but with the rib cage so then you're kind of fighting it you know mm -hmm. it's still okay but this just looks like a much better overall experience. and let me tell you Saturani, this is not this preparation here is not just for the bacon wrap people i love doing like say carne guisada yeah so if you want like that boneless where you don't have to be picking the bone and and you're gonna put it in the carne guisada this is the way to go let's move on to let's the next do what step. you do man all right so once again I, I like a good thick rub because anytime i got cream cheese i'm stuffing say chicken or you know dove anything uh this rub for some reason it just kind of that crackle in it that, that good taste it's got to that it. little coarse yes texture. so, so you, you want to put a generous amount of this stuff right into that breast this is about the only time i can go hunt and be with my family. 
here, you can be loud, it's fun. That's what brings everybody together. Right on. This is another good way to continue the fun, man. I love that. It's just wonderful, beautiful, old school traditions being passed down from the old ones to the young ones. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've got six breaths here. I'm okay. gonna do three mild and three hot. Orale. Okay, so in this point, I'm just gonna put the cut of bell pepper on these. Don't forget your onion, man. Right on, baby. Stick that thing in <laughs> gotta there. Gotta have some onion, yeah, too. Gotta have the onion. So, okay, we're gonna make these other ones the way we like them, hot and spicy. I like to give credit where credit is due. I'll tell you where this recipe came from. Okay. So, I'd never forget, I was a kid watching TV, you know, back when we only had, what, two, three channels on our TV? <laughs> yeah, right. So, you'd wait and watch the Bud Rowland right show. On. And, and Bud Rowland actually put on this 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 recipe. Right on. Made it good, and, and I'll tell you what, ever since then, I, I, I've, been, I've been using it, and it's awesome. great. And like I said, you can perfect it to you the way you want it. Right on. So here's what we're doing. We're wrapping the bacon, and I like to go a full bacon. Mm -hmm. I like to go a full bacon. A little crisscross action there. Exactly, and that's because nice. I don't like some of that. Once that thing starts cooking, I don't like for the mm -hmm. cream cheese to start seeping out. It will, and if it does, hey, no, no harm, no foul. Keep it going, right. keep it going. You know, you can either do individual. I mean, personally, I like to use these bamboo, uh, bamboo skewers okay. and just kind of I double run them. So I'll hit them on one end, mm -hmm. here, come around the other end. That way when they start cooking, Arnie, I, if I turn them, I'm not necessarily gonna be, you know, having them- They don't roll. Roll, exactly, yeah. you got you, you yeah. got it. I like to call these bird on a roost, man. See? Bird on a what? On a roost. On a roost? See, they're just kind of perched up there. You wanna leave a little gap in between, kind of just space your finger in there. Mm -hmm. That way you know, because if you got the meat making contact, it's not gonna cook properly. Right on. Another dash of the your garnish, your seasoning, that's the way to do it, man. What was flying in the sky a minute ago is gonna be in our bellies here in a few, but I got some white wing, real Grandy Valley white wing dove. Yes, sir, all yeah. right, let's get them on the grill. Oh, baby, that looks good. Can you hear the sizzle? Yeah, I got it. I hear that sizzle. Beautiful. They're looking really good right there. I mean, are we gonna do the flippity flip at some point? At some point, yeah, you know, because you know bacon it starts rendering all that grease. See, I already got something going on down there. You don't want too much of that fire going up where you're gonna charm too much. Right but on. yeah, we'll do the flippity fit because why? Because that fat from the bacon, where's it gonna go? It's gonna go in the middle, right? You that's want right. that juiciness in the center. So that's why we're gonna do that. Now that I got that nice sear, getting nice and brown, I'm gonna just kind of rest them over here. That way they start cooking evenly. All right, Arnie, like I said, we, we moved them over in the indirect heat, a little bit off the, the coals. Uh, we're gonna hit them with a pen and you can see and I figure we're gonna be at the mid mark 140 in that area So these are a little bit on the outside. We'll go into the center right there. There we go We're up at 152 153. What and kind of temperature are you looking for right I'm now? I'm looking at about 165 Like okay. I said once again, it's it's wild game. You want to be cautious about it. I like the 160 165 for duff there you go, I'm just flippity flip them. You can see that bacon searing. Yeah, it's looking really nice, man. All right, Hammond, what you got, bud? Looking beautiful there. Got a nice, gorgeous color. So here's what we're gonna do right now, Arnie. They're about, I'd say more than three quarters of the way done, and uh, we're gonna glaze them. I know we've eaten these things like, say, chicken wing appetizers, mm -hmm. and you can use all kinds of, you know, sauces, dipping sauces, you know, make your own stuff. In this case, I'm gonna make it simple. I'm gonna glaze them with a barbecue sauce. The other half, I'm gonna hit them with just regular pure honey. But we're gonna let it caramelize for a minute and then uh, probably take them out and let them rest. All right, cool. So there we go, man. We're gonna hit right there, 160. 160, we're done, baby. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit it again. Since they're nice and hot, man, that honey's just gonna still continue caramelizing in there. Now I'm gonna take out the barbecue-based ones, stack those. I wanna do a shout out to Rojas Heavy Equipment. San Antonio, Laredo, Alamo, soon to be Victoria Corpus, Austin. All right, remember we were talking about the little tenderloins that were left over on those uh, mm -hmm. fillets we made? So here's the here's the end product right here. Man, right. that looks good. You can see we got like a little juice in there, similar to our guisados. We got the veggies going. All right, friends, we have our doves. The dove hunt is pretty much done. The sun's going down fast. Let's do it. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, bud. Thank you. All right. Oh, man. Hmm. I think I got the bell pepper. Okay. Maybe it's the jalapeno. <laughs> Man, that's good, Jaime. You did an awesome job. I can take the bacon, a little onion. Man, the dove comes through, you know, it, it doesn't get overpowered by the other stuff. It's just really yep. good. Man, what a great job. The honey. I love that honey. Next, I'm going to get me a barbecue sauce one because I like them both. 
Is it okay if I have two? You can have as many as you want. What would you give three tips to people out there on how to cook doves? Get them in the ice as quick as possible. You gotta get your meat nice and preserved, clean it up quick. Don't be afraid to spice it up. Use whatever spices you want. And of course, keep the fire burning. Yeah. Cook them in the pit, cook them on the coal, smoke them, do whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is... Uh, this is really great. This is something you're not going to get at your local barbecue shop. That for sure. Uh, this is kind of a once a year kind of thing. You know, there's only a few weeks of the year that we can appreciate stuff like this. Exactly. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's family, man. You got all your family around here. Everybody showed up, got a bunch of other meat on the pit. Everybody's just having a great time, man. That's what I really love about this kind of stuff, man. And I really love eating doves. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, man. Thank you for having us, man. We really appreciate it. Guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thanks for following. Thanks for all the nice comments. Thank you, Jaime, for having us. Let's keep the smoke light and make it work. Boom! That's looking really good, Anthony. Anthony. Ya no le vendan. Is your name Anthony, sir? It is. Andrew! You're doing good, man. Looking gorgeous there. Little Right on, baby. Do you remember you? growing up and your mom always had a pickle jar or mayonnaise jar with a what? Salsa. <laughs> always had salsa. This is salsa. Mama's salsa, man. It's a, it's a legend around these parts. So. Oh, good. It's good stuff. It's but just... I'm wondering if your mom will give me the recipe <laughs> to that salsa. No, <laughs> it ain't going anywhere. So what you're saying is she hasn't even given you the recipe. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I ain't never going to get it. <laughs>